Welcome back, and we're here now at our level 5 situations. Well, this looks pretty much the same of trying to solve this question that we have x squared plus 3x plus 1 equals 5. Um, before, we found that we could probably guess as to what the perfect square thing was by just splitting this 3 or this middle term in half. So this would be like x plus 1.5 squared. Uh, but Or we could have x plus 3 over 2 squared. And then figure out what that looks like in the box. And then add or subtract the, decibel, the necessary decimals. If you want to proceed, you could still do this very same technique with fractions or decimals of completing our square and fulfilling the what needs to what do you need to add to that last one to make it a perfect square to this and or this if you don't like working with either of these which most people really don't we can still do something so we can avoid those decimals and or fractions uh, in the process okay so we're going to speed that we're going to do that so you could keep doing the decimals if you really want to, but you got to show all that work. I'm going to avoid all that, and because fractions and decimals can be hard thinking. Um, so basically, though, we want this to be able to split in half nicely. We also want to have this perfect term here as a perfect square. So we could, in fact, multiply the whole equation by something to make that work. So we want this as our target to be a square number, because as we see when we write out these squares, we, the first term that we get is in fact a product of two identical values here. Okay, So this is going to be this first term here. This one, this middle term, seems to be, ma be made up of these two, so we want to split it in half. And this one we can just fix at the end by adding and subtracting. So we want this to be a perfect square, and we want this to be even, so that we have nice whole numbers. Currently it's 1. That would be x and x. But it doesn't help us with this even business. So we're going to try to do something so that we get these two conditions true. So we can start multiplying by 2. Well, because that will take care of the even, we'd get 2x squared plus 6x plus 2 equals 10. We could do that. That would be like x plus 3 and x plus 3, but then we have to split up the 2 and we get square root 2, square root 2. Not nice. So that may not be the best choice right there. Multiplying everything by 2. We could try getting everything by 3, but then we wouldn't have even because they have 3 times 3. Let's see what 4 does. If we multiplied everything by 4, so times 4, times 4, times 4, times 4. We learned in math 10, we can take an equation. If we multiply it by a coefficient, no change. 4x squared plus 12x. Ooh, 4 is a square. 12 is even. We seem to be getting somewhere plus 4 equals 20. Let's see what happens when we go and we get 4x squared. Okay, 12x is 6x and 6x. So 2 is common to these because 4 comes from 2 and 2. 2 and 6 gets us back to 3. Oh, 2 times 6, 3x. Okay. Let's complete this square. The last term we need to get is 3 times 3, which is plus 9. So this is what, if it was to be a perfect square, we would get 2x plus 3 squared if our last term is 9, but it's only at 4. Well, we can fix that by adding 5, because to get from 4 to 5, got to... Oh, sorry, 4 to 9, you add a 5. Add 5. No biggie. 
So we get 2x plus 3 squared. Now the statement's true is 25. Beautiful. Because now we can keep going by square rooting both sides. Sorry about the video crop there. All right, so we have 2x plus 3 equals 5, or 2x plus 3 equals negative 5. Now, we got to solve for x from a linear expression. Again, the rule of thumb is subtract this term. So just minus 3, minus 3. 2x is 2, divide by 2. No, oh, x equals 1. There's one answer. It's a nice, lovely integer. Yay. Let's see what happens over here. Minus 3, minus 3. 5 minus 3 negatively is negative 8. And we have 2x equals negative 8. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. We get x equals negative 4. Well then, we seem to have lovely inte integer answers. And everything we have done is consistently true. Let's see if that works for this next one where we have x squared plus 7x minus 2. I'm just going to erase everything. You, sorry, level 5. All right, we got x squared plus 7x minus 2. Let's see what happens when we multiply, because we wanted this to be even. It's not. We want this to be a square. Okay, so let's just multiply everything by 4. We're going to get 4x squared. 4 times 7, 28. x, 2 times 4, 8. That's negative. Equals 5 times 4, 20. So what we get is an even number in the middle, which can split in half our box, and the first number is a perfect square. Okay, I'll just make my little box here. Perfect square, if we can represent it as a square. Okay, so now we've got 4x squared will be the result of here. 28 could split in half to 14 x and 14 x positively positively and okay the 4 comes from 2 and 2 x and x well how do you get from 2x to 14 plus 7 which we kinda had a sense before by the way it was right there okay plus 7 alright so 2 times 7, 14. 2 times 7, 14. That's still perfectly consistent. 7 times 7 is now positive 49 is what we want for our constant term. Uh-oh. We're only at negative 8. Okay. So little rule of thumb. We want to get it to positive 49. First, let's make it to 0. How do you get from negative 8 to 0? Well, you add 8. If you need to chunk your head, chunk these things in your head. Add 8, you're at 0. So let's add 8. You're at 0. Now you add 49. Okay? And then you add 49. So if we add 8, we're at 0. And then we're at 49. So if we add 8 and 49 to 20, we have a perfect square. What do we have? We've got 2x plus 7 squared is, oh, let's just do the chunking math here, 20, 49, I'll do the big numbers first, 9, 6, and add 8 more, uh, 17, and 1, 77. Huh. Okay. So we have 2x plus 7 squared. We have a nice perfect square on the left. is 77. Well, let's undo that square and see what we get. Square this, square root that. So we can make a very solid claim that 2x plus 7 equals, uh, if you tried that in your calculator, you probably don't recognize that as a perfect square from last year or in your calculator, so we're going to leave it as 77. And it doesn't even reduce from our previous unit. We also have the idea that we have the 2x plus 7 equals the negative of that root because negative times negative is a positive. 
So what do we do now? Okay, we want to get that x by itself. Yeah, no problem. We've always been doing this. Minus 7. So we have square root 77. Take away 7. That gives us 2x. Then we just divide by 2. And we'll just take the whole thing and divide by 2 and call it a day. Right there. That's the first one. It looks very ugly, but if you wanted to verify, we could do all that stuff in our calculators for an approximate, but there's an exact answer. That can't be reduced. That can't be reduced. Technically, that's it. This is where we got to our problems in our radical unit. All right, same thing here. We're going to do the, on the right-hand side, minus 7. So we got negative root 77, take away a 7. They don't combine. Equals 2x, divide by 2, and divide by everything by 2 and there's the other possible weird looking answer and that is level 5